Hello, I'm Rela Nardo. I'm an editor fellow from the Journal of Immunotherapy and Precision Oncology. And today I'll have an interview with Dr. Abdul, Abdul Rahman Razi. He's the Director of Innovation and Research and Cincinnati Cancer Advisor, Editor-in-Chief of the Global Journal of Quality and Safety in Healthcare. So Dr. Jazzy, thank you so much for being here today with us. Thank you, Marla, for giving me the chance to talk about the research article that we publish in GIBO. Yes, we are very excited about this article and we'd like to discuss it with you today. So the name of the article is Erlotinib in patients with advanced non-small cell lung cancer in Middle Eastern population. So first of all, I'd like to, me to ask you if you could briefly explain the idea of this article to our audience. Yeah, it's very important to understand the article in the context that it, uh, the study was done in. Um, you know, as you can tell now, you know, erlitinib is not the first line treatment, the preferred first line treatment for non small cell lung cancer. But at the time the study was conducted over the years, there was few things that, you know, were not addressed. The first one is validation of the drug in a different population that got the approval of the drug, which is a Middle Eastern population. We did not have data at that time about this population. Also, we did not have um, uh, you know, full knowledge about what we know now about the EGFR mutation. The testing was not prevalence, uh, prevalent as much as, or even uh, it was not as accurate as we know of now. Um, and that's why there is uh, patients who are not even uh, tested for EGFR were on the study. Because initially when the drug was approved, even there was EGFR was not uh, required at, at certain time also was given for second line treatment, irrespective of whether you know EGFR or not. So there was multi purpose to ad multi purpose for doing this study. But the most important thing is to test the drug to get real world data, real world evidence about a different population that was not studied before. And this is so important, right? Because in many trials, we don't have a good representation of some populations. Absolutely, and especially in the Middle Eastern population, there there'll be actually less than other uh, countries. You know, whether they are Europe or Western countries, or even from the Eastern country, Asia, Eastern Asian countries. Okay, great. And did you notice any genetic difference in terms of driver mutation prevalence in the Middle Eastern population when compared to the previous clinical trials? In, in this study, actually, we w what we find is, is very interesting. Actually, if you look at the world map and then you distribute the EGFR mutation, you find that the Western population is 10 to 20 percent. You know, if you focus on, on adenocarcinoma, it will be like up to 20 percent. In the East Asian countries, it will be 40, 50 percent. Um, in the Middle Eastern population, actually, it was 30%. So actually, it's in the middle uh, range between uh, both ethnic, you know, uh, ethnic uh, groups, you know, so that's, uh, that is very important thing. And it makes sense because, you know, probably of the, uh, you know, the, you know, the geographic proximity may have some kind uh, of uh, genetic implication on interaction between people and so on. So that's, uh, that's, you know, the, the, but in term of the uh, subtype, um, you know, it's almost the same uh, prevalence, you know, that exon uh, 19 is the most common than uh, 21, than 18. So it's, it's like, you know, 50% of the mutations were ex exon 19. So it's like the rest of the populations. Okay. And uh, do you believe this knowledge impacts in your clinical decisions? Yeah, it's very important that uh, you know, you know, when when you have high prevalence of certain mutation, that give you a, a better uh, you know range of decision making that is uh, different than when it is rare. When it is rare, so for example, in in patients who are not tested, and you'll see that in our study, patients who are unknown. Um, uh, EGFR mutation status, you could give empirically TKI and they will benefit from it 
Well, why? Because third of the patients have this mutation. And as a second line, this will be better than any known chemotherapy, uh, you know, that we knew in the past, uh, you know, to, to, to use as a second line. So yes, the fact that we have high prevalence of EGFR mutation may have a clinical implication. As we said in the article, we are not Im implying by any means not to do EGFR testing. But, you know, this is real world. This is, you know, not everybody has access to it. And sometimes even if you have access to the testing, the patient's condition may not allow for you to biopsy, re-biopsy to get enough tissue if you did not get it in the first uh, time. Patients may refuse to have biopsy, in addition, not having access to the, to the treatment. So, uh, you know, rather than not treating the patients at all, and if you have access to um, TKI, you may try them for a short period of time and see how the patient does on that. Great, great. This is very interesting and very different uh, because of this, this prevalence, yes. And do you have a hypothesis? It's just a detail, but came to my mind that you have a hypothesis. Why patients receiving radiation had a worse overall survival in your publication? Yeah, by the way, I don't know if you know that the SWAG study um, S0023, where the patients got uh, chemo uh, radiotherapy stage three lung cancer, um, that chemo radio then consolidation with. Um, um, with radiation, uh, with the taxotere, then after that they were maintained on uh, on gefitinib, published by Dr. Kelly at GCO, and that, that's a SWAG study. And actually, those on erlitinib did worse than those who were on placebo. And and you know, we don't know what what is the the really cause whether there was uh, some detrimental effect between radiation and, and TKI. But the, the situation in our study is different. The situation is that these patients, all of them are stage four, except two of them, you know, like, or, or you know, actually 2%, one of them is, is receive radiation. I mean, stage three, I mean. But those who receive radiation must most likely receive it either for palliation in advanced setting to receive radiation to the bones or, or you know, for obstructive uh, lesion or something like that. Or they were stage three to start with, and now they progress, so they are likely to be in much worse uh, general condition. I do not think uh, the TKI has anything to do with being uh, with having worse prognosis with the radiation. Perfect. It makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So thank you so much, Dr. Jazzy. It's amazing being able to hear directly from the author. What are your thoughts about this article. So thank you so much for that. Me and Jipo are very happy to have you here in this interview. Thank you very much for the chance, Marla. I appreciate it. Take so care.